Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this evening's guest moderator, Peter Knitt from IndieWire, and tonight's guests, Lenny Abrahamson and Jack Renor. So welcome here to the, uh, the talk with the director and star of What Richard Did, um, which you just saw the clip of. Welcome to the Apple Store. Thanks. Thank you very much. So I guess maybe to start off, I mean, these folks just saw the trailer, but maybe in your own words, um, tell us a little bit about this film and, and what people should expect from it. Um, well, it's a, it's a film about a sort of upper middle class boy from Dublin, Richard, who um, appears to be like, well, sort of does have a, an incredible life. He's the handsomest, most popular, most athletic, academically very gifted kid. Yeah, not obviously. This is a it's a big acting job for Jack, um, and uh, it just follows him through the course of a summer when things change radically. He he does something which makes him question whether he really knows who he is at all. And um, I suppose yeah, it's a a boy who has a very strong sense of who he is who's forced to to deal with a big challenge to that. But it's written by uh, Malcolm Campbell. Yes, it's written by Malcolm Campbell, who's a uh, actually a British writer who's living in Ireland. Um, who also responded very strongly to the book that the film is loosely based on, which is called Bad Day in Black Rock, written by a writer, Irish writer called uh, Kevin Barry, uh, Kevin Power. And he's, yeah, so Mal was a big, you know, collaborator from the beginning on the project. And that book is a fictionalized account of an actual true story. Um, I mean, was there any, when you're filming this, even though it is fiction, um, was there any sort of conflict with the, the, you know, the case and the people that were involved with the, the story? It's loosely sort of... We, uh, I'm, like, the book had moved so far away from that event um, and our film, before I even came on board, I mean, back in 2010, the script that they'd initially, like, the first draft that they'd written was so far removed from that event that, uh, I mean, you could liken our movie to seven or eight different cases that are all similar in Ireland. Um, we had a we, bit of a job with the press because the press were very keen to make the connection uh, on the lead up to us making the film. It was a sexy story to talk about, you know, somebody's making a film of this famous case and we continued to, to state the truth, which is we're not doing that. And it, but I think when the film came out, those comparisons stopped because people saw just how different our film was to any specific case that they may have known about. And it's been out, the film's been out in Ireland since the fall, correct? Yes. That's right, yeah. And I guess um, maybe how you can each talk about how you got involved with the film. I mean, how the script came to you and how the script came to you. Well, so there was no script when I got involved in that. Um, Ed Guiney, who's the producer of the film, who's here, um, uh, he had read the book um, and optioned it, actually, already, and showed it to me to see if I'd be interested in it as a project. I read it, and also Malk had independently read it, the writer, and we, we started talking about it, and we both felt that there was something in it, a kind of interesting starting point, particularly around the character of Richard, who's just one of several um, key characters in the, in the book. We decided that our film would really concentrate on him. Um, and so that's how I got involved and then started to work with Malcolm. We wrote a first draft, and then very quickly, we thought the best way to proceed with the film was to cast it, because you got these two middle-aged guys trying to imagine their way into the... To the speech the minds the the lives of of teenagers and we felt we really needed to to engage with cast pretty early in the process and that's that's when we got involved with jack um for me it was just a case of it was a book that i'd read in school i actually had to study it um and my agent after i did this kind of small independent film in in dublin called dollhouse he sent me through um the script and uh, told me to reread the book and I went in and I met Lenny on it at the end of 2010 wasn't it yeah um and we did a couple of different auditions didn't we we I mean I came into you like how many I think times twice yeah you, well you, I saw you on tape and then um then we met and then we did this kind of intense weekend of auditioning with like people that we, I mean, I kind of, I've always said I knew that it would be Jack, but I wanted but to put him through the process for, for a while. <laughs> for sure. I mean, well, you lead a, a really impressive ensemble of young actors, and, it's, and it, you know, the film works for various reasons, but it works also because, you know, these actors do such a great job. I think it's a testament to um, a young generation of Irish actors that are coming up now, who are, I mean, we had some really solid guys in that cast, Paddy Gibson, who I have to give a huge amount of credit to. Uh, was awesome in that film. Um, Sam Keighley, 
uh, we had really great guys who we collaborated with, and um, you know we all we we all made that film together. It was it's very much uh, something that we all contributed to a lot, and we spent eight months workshopping it before we shot it, and those workshops just consisted of extensive conversations about all facets of our lives, and that was where we kind of developed the film from. We had this thing where we we when we when we when we we sort of knew who, we we cast the film and we actually cast some people who didn't have parts even in the script as it existed when we cast it. So for example, Paddy over there, there was no character, a character called Jake in the film who's, who's about two or three years younger than Richard's gang. And Paddy came in and we, we just loved him so much that myself and Malk decided that we would find a, a role for him in the film and, and write him in. But we, so we had this, this, this cast and we thought we'd get them together and start talking. We'd maybe talk for a little while and then we'd start to workshop. But the conversation was so interesting that that conversation really lasted, you know, on and off for those eight months. Just, just really um, in-depth conversations about the, the, the worlds that these kids came from because they came from very similar worlds to the characters in the film. Well, maybe it's uh, a good time to show one of the, a couple clips that we have. If you want to, do you want to set up the first one? Which one is the first one? The police. The police. Um, so this is just a scene. Um, without giving too much away, uh, Richards had an altercation, and um, he's killed somebody at this point of the film. And um, he goes to the police station because kind of everybody who was there that night is is called in for questioning just to see if they can find out any details about the case and. Richard's brought in and it's kind of a moment where this is his big opportunity to do the right thing um, and to do what he would expect himself to do and uh, we come out with a it's it's a different sort of outcome all right can we sell the clip so one of the things about that scene is you, you, you really don't know what he's going to do when he when he walks in because of the way that we build up to that and then I suppose the, the thing that's striking is just how effortlessly he lies and how easily it comes to him. And uh, this, uh, this film is, for both of you, I believe your third features. So, I mean, that kind of puts you each in a, a certain place. And, you know, and maybe for any aspiring actors or filmmakers uh, in the audience, maybe talk about, um, you know, what you learned working on this film that was new to your experiences as an actor and, and as a director. Well, for me, to, to kind of spend eight months and have the freedom to develop a film um, and really think critically about it before you go into it, especially when it's something that's so close to your heart, um, was an amazing experience. And I think that everybody should do a film like that, where it's not at all... There was never even a moment of ego from anybody on that set. All... Everybody who was involved, all we wanted to do was make the best film we could. And we spent such a long time and just meticulously went over every aspect of the film <clears throat> until we got it to the point where it was exactly how we wanted it to be. Um, and that's not something that you get to do a lot, as an actor at least. I'm not sure you know, how it is when you're a director, but as an actor, you don't really get to do that, and you, you're not afforded the time to really, really invest yourself in, 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 in as intensive a way as we did here. I mean, normally, just to sort of put it in perspective, you're lucky if there's a week of rehearsal before a film. Yeah. And so, in this case, we had the, the luxury of, of the, all that time in advance. I mean, the shoot was pressurized as usual, and time was short, but because we'd worked together in that way, it just meant that we could draw on all that, you know, all that And we all knew work. each other so well at that point and knew the ebbs and flows of everybody who was there, which just made it really harmonious. And that's the kind of set that I want to work on. I want to work on a set where there's harmony and people all push together for the sake of the movie. And uh, coincidentally, you're both working next. I'm not sure at what stages in these two projects that you're in, but you're working on a, a comedy with Michael Fassbender, and you're about to... Uh, Stars lead in Transformers Four, so clearly you're both, you know, jumping off to a new. So just tell us a little bit about those projects and how where you are with those, as much as you can say. So the the project that I went on to after, um, 
what Richard did, which I'd been actually working on before I started working on Richard did, um, is a film called Frank, written by John Ronson, who's here, and um, Peter Strawn, another really fine writer. And it's a, it's a strange comedy about a band, and the band are led by um, a musician called Frank, who's played by Michael Fassbender. And the really bizarre thing about the film is that Fassbender wears a, a fake head, a large fake head, um, and, and is, you know, invisible, uh, which is a strange thing to do with an actor who's so sought after at the moment, but it is, he does an amazing job. Um, and also Maggie Gyllenhaal is in it, um, Scoot McNary, a great Irish actor called Donald Gleeson. And, uh, you know, so I'm, we, we shot that uh, at the very end of last year and beginning of this year, and we're in the middle of the edit, so hope to have it finished late, I suppose, early autumn this year. Um, so thanks to Richard, thanks to what happened with us. Um, I went on and did this movie called The Delivery Man here in New York with DreamWorks. And uh, from there, a couple of meetings were set for me with Paramount and, and with Michael Bay, and I've, I'm in the incredible situation where he's cast me in Transformers, and I'm going to go off and shoot that now next month um, until the end of the year. Uh, and it's just incredible. I'm so lucky and just delighted and incredibly grateful about it. Um, I guess before we show one more clip and then open it up to the audience, uh, maybe just talk a little bit about what you hope um, you know people take from this film and, and what it's been like here at Tribeca watching it with an audience. Um, it's been it's always very satisfying to show a film to it was it seemed the audience seemed to get something out of the film yesterday and it's festivals are very important for for films. It's a way to I mean it creates attention and it, it's also as a filmmaker a way to see what an, how an audience a film literate audience reacts to your work. Um, I don't know, I think there are many things that you could take out of this film. One is, one thing I was interested in looking at was just how difficult it is. Uh, how, I mean, quite a lot of the, the things that I've done follow a pattern in which you think you know the lead character very well at the beginning. And by the end of the film, while the person remains totally real, um, it becomes harder to easily define them. and and, and uh, and I think, if anything, you should leave this film with less certainties about yourself and about, and about what you would do in a similar situation than you may have gone into the film with. Um, that's exactly how I feel. That I think it's a movie that's just food for thought for people. Um, and I think you should come out of it and be reflecting on yourself. And uh, I don't think you're going to leave this film with a smile on your face. But um, certainly it'll make you think critically about uh, this different aspects of your own life. And that's what I would hope. Well, maybe we'll show one more clip and then we'll uh, get some questions from the audience. So you, oh, you guys want to set this up as well? Oh, just, so this is a scene where, again, it's another fairly intimate scene where uh, Jack's character, Richard, is, is meeting one of the guys who was there the night that the, that the, um, the, the, the fight happened. And uh, it's a guy that he was incredibly close to and it's part of the movement towards Richard become it's part of the journey towards Richard becoming more isolated in the film. All right, yeah, so uh, anyone in the audience have any questions? I'd like to ask Jack if he's going to be a primarily film actor and has he had any stage training or intends to do any stage work in the future? Um, well, when I was a kid I did... Um, a lot of shows and stuff in school and I enjoyed being on stage and that was primarily what I'd done up until I was 18 and I made my first feature film um, and thankfully I found the transition easy enough. Um, however, I never trained professionally. I just grew up watching films and that's all I ever wanted to do from the time I was really, really young, like five. Um, and I would like eventually, I'm sure, to do um, a stage production, but there's something about uh, the subtleties of being on camera and the finesse that's in us that I really, really love. And that is where all my interest is at the moment, and uh, I think that's going to be the way it's going to carry on for a long time. How do you see your role being, if you do, significantly different in Transformers, and how do you feel about that? drastic change? Um, 
What Richard did, it's an independent film. Uh, it's, like I've said, it's, it's the kind of movie that you should leave and really think in depth about. Um, and that's, that's the purpose of the film. It's, it's there to speak to people um, and, to, and to make them reflect. Uh, with Transformers, it's a totally different thing, of course. It's a huge amount of fun. Um, and the reason that I really want to be involved in Transformers um, is because it's just incredibly entertaining. And if it's the kind of thing that takes people out of themselves and out of their own lives and out of their own heads for an hour and a half or two hours, and they watch fast cars and explosions and they have fun, then I've done my job. And that's what I care about. If I'm entertaining people, brilliant. So after you've come out of this film feeling deeply depressed and... Go and watch Transformers. Hating and self-hating, <laughs> you can just stick on Transformers and then it's like uppers and downers, you know? <laughs> so I actually had a chance to see the film. I really enjoyed it. Um, in my viewing, I kind of was able to draw some comparisons to kind of um, Irish culture in general right now and kind of what's going on in the world. So how much of the film was meant to be kind of more of a personal story and how much of it did you feel was really reflective of kind of what's going on and kind of meant to be more of a parable in that sort of a sense. Well, I suppose one thing to say is that the, the sorts of, of teenagers that this film uh, f focuses on probably have more in common with, with their American counterparts really than they, than they do with the rest of Irish culture, or at least, at least it's a kind of international class. I mean, they're, they're smart, um, savvy, tech savvy, kids who are into, th into the same kind of cultural stuff that, that their peers in other countries would be. Um, but they're also from where they're from. I mean, I, I think the, the, your best chance of making, it's a cliche, but it's true, I and mean, the best chance of making something universal is to be just true to, to the specifics of, of, the, of uh, to be true in detail to the people and situations you're looking at. And, and so, but, but there are some specifically Irish aspects to this film. There are some resonances to the film that are really uh, going to be stronger at home. But then it seems to me that people have responded to that character. And, 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 and the film is about ideas and themes which are pretty universal. So I think the two things coexist. You don't choose when you start to make a film whether, whether this is one for home or for abroad. Hope, hope that answers the question. Hi, I just wanted to ask you, you have uh, Lars Mikkelsen, who is the star of The Killing in it, and um, I just wondered if it's a coincidence that everybody's into Scandi stuff at the moment, and it has, to me, a very kind of um, Bergman feel to it. Is that, is that a coincidence? There'll be $50 waiting for you after the, the, <laughs> this Q&A. Um, well, I, you know, there is a sort of, there's a little tongue-in-cheek thing in casting a Scandinavian actor in... But that's not the reason I... I mean, there's a pleasure, I should say, rather, in casting somebody from that part of the world. I I'm, was in, have been influenced a lot by Scandinavian cinema, and um, the idea of having a depressive Scandinavian character in the, in the film is both right somehow for the film and also does relate, like maybe it does have echoes of that, that you know, that, that tradition which I love. But L Lars is... I mean, again, in the same way that we worked with Jack, we worked with Lars to develop that character, and 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 he brought an awful lot to that that we then let flow through the rest of the of the film. And we we always had this idea that Richard that we wanted to give Richard a real family with the with the quirks and details and particularities of any real family, and so uh, and also this idea that Richard is somehow desperate to to be successful, to be happy, to be whole and positive in a way that he feels will make his father proud and, and happy seemed to add something very pathetic to the, to the events of the film as it unfolded. And he's also just a great actor. You know what's great about Lars is that like, from the first day that I met him, we became such good friends, like really, really, really solid friends, really very close and uh, kind of kindred spirits really me and him in a lot of ways in a lot of ways. Um, and I think that that translated into the film because, yeah, it's a very father-son relationship, but they're also, at the start, you can see how they're mates. And that's very important. They're friends. And they relate to each other on that level. And that's why it's so painful when we see that relationship break down because it's not only um, 
a rift between a father and son, but it's a rift between friends and people who love and respect each other as well. And I think that that actually is one of the key elements of the film. Yeah, I should also say that when Lars came over and, and we introduced him to Jack, I was thinking, well, how will this 19-year-old actor, will he be intimidated by this, you know, 50-something very established Danish uh, actor, very he's tall, in his 40s. you know, he's, he's in, wouldn't like you for that. You know, and, you know, six foot four and kind of very impressive guy. And so they went off for a drink. And then I met them about eight hours later after about 14 pints. And um, Lars could hardly stand up. And, and Jack was kind of helping him along. <laughs> so, him taxi so, the so yeah, night. so they, they got on very well. Um, Jack, you briefly explain your process from jumping from this film to Transformers, um, and it made it to, you made it seem like all of a sudden you had a meeting with Paramount. Can you go into more yeah. of a deeper process? Yeah, or yeah it's how that came hard about? to explain because it kind of nearly was all of a sudden I had a meeting with Paramount. Um, it was such a whirlwind process. Um, this film, the world premiere was in Toronto in September of last year. And once that had finished, I went ahead and um, I went over to L.A. and I picked up a supporting role in this movie with DreamWorks called The Delivery Man. Um, and while I was shooting that film, Hurricane Sandy hit and I went back out to L.A. just to do a couple of meetings. Um, and when I went out, I was afforded just enough time to do a couple of generals with Paramount um, and to basically become familiar with the people who are involved in the Transformers series. Um, and from that point, I met Michael, talked about the film, and uh, I had like two weeks, which was just long enough for me to go through the process. But I should say, I think Jack, I think Jack doesn't un quite understand how unusual it is. I do understand but how do, unusual yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think it's mad every day. <laughs> but but I, I, I remember, because Jack was you picked up by WME, which is a big part of I suppose getting into those meetings, and that was on foot of what Richard did. And but but I, I remember Jack saying to me, you know, what I really need to do. This is back in Dublin after we'd finished shooting Richard and before it came out. He said my plan is to go out to Hollywood and get a three picture deal. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to I said to Ed, the producer, I said, poor Jack is deluded and. Uh, we should try and dampen his expectations because he's, you know, he's going to go out there and he's going to be waitering and it's going to take an awful long time. Maybe he should stay in London where he has good agent and get some really high-end TV. And then at the end of Toronto, I said, are you still going to go out? To, are you still planning to go out to L.A.? He said, yeah, I'm, I've got a place I can crash on the floor of and this I had guy's no apartment. Money. He gave me $40. I, had what, I gave Jack what I had in my pocket when he was getting the taxi to the airport. And I thought, there goes another set of dreams. <laughs> and, then, and then about... Four weeks later, he rang me to say that he had a three-picture deal in Transformers with Michael Bay. So, well, you know, there you go. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> well, congratulations on the film, and congratulations on your dreams not being squashed. That's, Thank that's you very good. much. Anyway, thanks for being here, and thanks for being here. Thank you very much. The film is called What Richard Did. It's available right now on iTunes. You can check it out on iTunes.com slash Tribeca Film Festival. Definitely go take a look.